Hey y'all, I'm Hope, and today we're going to be diving back into some Phasmophobia for another ARC review. But today I'm actually going to be reviewing two ARCs because I read two different ARCs that both have like haunted or cursed media in them. So I thought this was like an interesting overlap and I thought it would be fun to do both of these and also hunt some ghosts along the way. So the two books I'm going to be talking about today are Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Miranda Garcia, which comes out on July 18th, and Mr. Magic by Kirsten White, which comes out on August 1st. I really enjoyed both of these and I'm looking forward to them coming out so that more people can pick them up and I am hopeful that maybe something I say today will help you decide if you want to pick these books up. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. But yeah, I think this will be a fun way to talk about these and I think without any further rambling on my part, let's just dive into the game and go ahead and start hunting some ghosts and talking about these books. Good news is I already had that all pulled up so I didn't have to like mess with anything and get it set up. So we're going to be playing on Intermediate and we're going to play on Willow Street House, which is my favorite map. I just like the layout of it and I think it's good for when I'm trying to talk and do stuff at the same time because it's pretty open so it's not quite as difficult for me to see what I'm doing. So we're just going to dive right in, make sure I got everything in the truck and there we go. We will listen to the radio man so that we can hear his radio plan and then we will start talking about the books. Right, we're here. Take a look at the equipment and prepare accordingly before starting the investigation. Got the intel. Looks like this is going to be a tough one. We've had Great. Of violence, and it looks like they left in a hurry. I can't remember exactly what the radio stuff like or refers to or like how it relates to what's actually going to happen. I really don't think there's much of a connection, but like, great. It's going to be a tough one. It's fine. So we're just going to go ahead and grab some tools. Actually, I want to put, come on, I want to put that back, grab that, and head in. should probably check where the breaker is. It's in the garage. Okay. We're ready now. We actually are ready this time. Also, if you see me looking down during this, I'm reading my notes so that I can kind of keep track of what I've talked about so far and where I'm headed with everything. So I think to start, we're going to start with um, Silver Nitrate because that book comes out earlier. And also, I think it's my favorite of the two. I suspect I'll have less to say on this one because I often do for books that I really like. I think that I kind of get stuck in this, like, I don't know, it worked for me, just go read it kind of way of talking about them. So we'll start there and see how long that takes us. So starting with Silver Nitrate, this book is about Montserrat and Tristan, who are a sound engineer and an actor, respectively. They've both been friends since childhood, and now they're kind of in these, like, down on their luck moments in their lives, trying to kind of figure out where to go from here. And they end up meeting this guy who was a director when they were younger. Actually, he wasn't even a director when they were younger. He was a director, like, decades before, um, before they were young. And he created some of their favorite horror movies, but then suddenly stopped directing horror. He did some other things before kind of falling out of the public eye. And so now, years later, they run into him and he tells them that he has a film that was never finished, that he believes is cursed, and that he wants their help, because they're an actor and a sound engineer, he wants their help trying to finish this cursed film, because that's the only way to break the curse that he thinks is attached to it and allow him and the other people who worked on the film all those years ago to kind of get free of the bad luck that has followed them since. So that's kind of the setup and I think that this book is interesting because that's really such a small portion of the beginning of the book or of the yeah of the book. Um, sorry don't mind me covering my eyes because I was panicking. Um, I was like oh we're gonna die right now. <laughs> um, anyway that's such a small portion of the story so I think it's interesting. Uh, as a spot to start. I will say that I think this book is not going to appeal to every reader. It really, really worked for me, but this is a very slow paced book. It is very much about like the character build up and the character work. Uh, it's a book about Montserrat and Tristan and the places that they're at in their lives and what <laughs> what they want out of life, what they, you know, maybe regret in their lives. It's very much about them and it's very tightly focused on that. So I think that if you're looking for something that's like really high action, this is probably not going to be what you're wanting. However, I do really like, what is it touching? My God. Um, I do really like the action that is in this book. It's definitely heavier in the latter half. I'd say this is a fairly slow to start book, but then it, once it kicks off, it like really kicks off and stuff just happens nonstop from that point on. So this is very much a slower character paced book. I would also say it feels more like a historical fiction novel in the first half than like a horror novel. 
it's very much focused on kind of the history of film and techniques used to make films. Um, that's m probably the major focus for the first half of the book. There's also a lot of stuff about like Nazi occultism. That's a major element of the book as well. And so there's a lot of history um, and just that kind of historical fiction-y feel to the first half of the book. That being said, one, again, once it kicks off, it really kicks off. And uh, it's pretty high octane for the, I'd say maybe the latter half of the book, maybe the last third. Um, it's really an interesting blend and I think it really works because by the time you get to the high octane bits, the kind of action-y portions of the book, you've got so much build up, you're really invested in these characters and you really understand what their um, goals are, what their motivations are, and I felt that that really helped me get invested in the horror elements in this second half. So I think that's kind of mostly what I have to say. I don't want to say anything that will spoil anything for this book because there are quite a few twists in it and I really enjoyed all the very very different directions that this book went. I think it does a lot of interesting things with its characters and I am again very much looking forward to people being able to pick it up because I really like Montserrat and Tristan. I'm very invested in them and I'm hoping that other people will love them as much as I did. Um, I do think the book ends in like the perfect way. This is the thing I always like about Sylvia Miranda Garcia's books is that I think that she really is good at endings. Whenever I finish one of her books, I feel like the characters and the world continue on after whatever whatever I've read. Like, this story has ended, but the world hasn't. And that's the thing I really love in books, and I think that this book, again, does that very well. You get to the end, and it feels like we've hit the end of Tristan and Montserrat's story for now. Like, this is the end of this part of their lives, but they have all of this, this other stuff going on now. And um, I just really enjoy that feeling at the end of a book. I think that the ending of this one is very sweet and it's just like perfectly ties together all the loose threads that the various mysteries in the story have kind of created because there are kind of a lot of mysteries happening. There's a lot of um, stuff happening in the background where you're like, well, who's doing that? There's a kind of a web of characters who are doing things in, in kind of behind the scenes in a way that I think is really um, creepy and really compelling. So I really like the way this book wraps up. And I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it, to be honest, because um, I I love this book and I want more people to read it. And again, when I like books, I have a much harder time talking about them. So I am, I think, gonna kind of wrap that up there, because I think if I say any more, I'm just gonna end up spoiling elements of the book for you guys, and I don't want to do that. So that's Silver Nitrate. Pick it up when it comes out. <laughs> it's really, really good. And I'm so excited for more people to be reading it because I think that, um, you know, current fans of Sylvia Miranda Garcia are going to love this one. And I think that, you know, new people coming to her work will really like this as well. Especially, again, if you like character work and, like, just lots of, like, very slow building dread and tension. I think that that's done really well here. Have I gotten a single piece of evidence? I don't think I have. I have been busy talking. Oh, we got Gorbs. Here, go for gorbs. And we got low temperatures, but not freezing temperatures. So I need to grab one of these, one of these. Head back in and see if we can actually get some evidence and figure out what this ghost is. So that I am not just leaving y'all hanging at the end of this video. Um, so <laughs> let's just move on now to Mr. Magic, which I just finished earlier today. So it's also a little fresher in my mind. Hopefully I will have some more thoughts on this one. But uh, Mr. Magic is about Val, who, like, many years ago was on a children's program that ended abruptly when there was some sort of accident on set. And now, like, 30 years later, she no longer remembers anything about her childhood, and there is a reunion happening, and all of the cast members are coming back together, but Val doesn't remember anything that happened, and she is determined to get answers and try to figure out what this part of her childhood was. So I really liked this one and kind of the project of it. I thought it was interesting. It's very much a book about like purity culture and um, this idea of people kind of enforcing their own idea, particularly adults enforcing their own idea of like what's good or what's right on children and trying to make decisions for like everyone's children, which I think is something that's really relevant right now with like all of the discussions on like book banning and stuff that have been happening. Um, that's very much what the story is about. And uh, I can't really explain that connection without spoiling at least part of the book for you. But that's a very large element in this, which I think is pretty clear with it being a kid's show. Um, 
that that kind of like the the forming of the next generation is pretty significant um, within the book. I think that the characters in this one, in comparison, having you know read Silver Nitrate and then I turned around and started Mr. Magic, I think that the characters here fall kind of flat. They kind of fall into these archetypes and the, the like purpose of each character is just not subtle. They're not very nuanced, I would say. You have like, you know, the spoiled rich kid and the quiet one and the sidekick and the the creative one. They all kind of find fall into these archetypes and I feel like the book tried to kind of break them out of that, but it just didn't quite work because we didn't learn enough about all of the characters for them to feel like they had more going for them or more to them than these kind of archetypes they fell into. And part of that was like, I think, intentional because of the whole children's show thing. It's the idea that like they filled these archetypes on this show and then they never really grew out of that. Um, so I think it's partially intentional, but I just don't think it worked very well for me personally. Just reading it, I felt like that was, I don't know, it, it just felt kind of unnuanced and also I didn't really care about the characters all that much. Let me uh, spirit box real quick, see if we get anything to talk to us. Are you here? Are you friendly? Where are you? I apologize for the loudness in this. It's, uh, okay. Are you here? Where are you? No. Okay. Well, it told me it was young. Not really quite what I was after, but thank you. So we do have spirit box. Mary Yokai on Rio. Do we have fingies? We do not, in fact, have fingies. But that might also just be me looking at the wrong door, so we're not gonna mark that off on the list just yet. I need to. Can I bring a dots with me? I did bring a dots with me. Um. There we go. What do you say? There you okay, Andrea? Not a terrible selection there. So. Moving on from the characters, I think that uh, the world building in this was also a little shaky. We don't get much of it until right near the latter half of the book. And um, actually, really, I would say closer to the end of the book. We don't get a whole lot of the world building and kind of explanation for what's going on for most of the book. And I think that was one of the things that was really shaky for me here is that when we're following Val, she was kind of a frustrating character to follow because she doesn't have memories of what happened so the whole like premise for her is that she needs to figure out what happened she needs to remember in order for things to kind of progress but there was so much of this like she doesn't remember and people won't give her information and it was just like every turn she would like make a plan to get information and that would immediately be dashed by some other thing and so we never really see her follow through on any of her plans she feels a little bit kind of waffly she just keeps kind of going back and forth on things trusting people not trusting people and it just made her kind of frustrating to follow because she really doesn't ultimately get very much information and definitely doesn't get it quickly. So I just was spent a lot of time going, okay, can, can I have like a crumb of information about this world and about what's happening? Um, so it was a mixture of that and then also feeling like the reveals were incredibly obvious. There were a few twists that were just, I think, kind of right in your face from the get go. And so when they got revealed, I was kind of like, oh, is that all? That was exactly what I was expecting. I'm kind of unsurprised by this. So I just don't think the reveals were super effective here. That being said, I did really like the themes as I mentioned earlier. There's some stuff about like um, religion and purity culture and um, the kind of the, the destruction that does, even then if it's good intentioned <laughs> or well intentioned, even when the people who are instilling rules mean well, it doesn't always mean that the things that they're doing are right or good. And I did think that that was a really interesting, oh, it's not ghostwriting because it chucked our book across. It's a mare. Um, I thought that was a really interesting element of the, the story and I think that thematically worked really well. Like I really enjoyed that kind of theme, especially as it wrapped up near the end of the book. I think that it was pretty well executed. I thought that was really well done. I also really liked the writing in this book. I felt like it was very vivid and I liked the way that occasionally the book kind of broke the fourth wall a little bit and spoke to the reader. There were also lots of like little mixed media elements that were fun because there were sections where there's like blog posts or Twitter threads or like emails between characters. Oh, I got a dots. Just saw it in the back. Oh, it's not in there. What is it then? 
Oh, right, because I marked off. Okay. It's a yokai. Never mind, I was wrong. It's a yokai. Um, but yeah, I felt like all of that was really interesting. I loved the writing. I liked the mixed media elements of this book, which I was not expecting at all. Really enjoyed those. I thought the kind of fourth wall breaking elements of this were neat, and the way that that kind of tied together at the end of the book was really clever. I think that was that was probably the twist that caught me the most off guard, was that the way the book kind of comes back around full circle was really good. So I think overall, character's pretty flat. Mystery's interesting. World building, minimal. Also very a little bit like A Study in Scarlet. If you've ever read A Study in Scarlet and you know that point in the part where you get like halfway and there's like a reveal and you go, wait, if that's the reveal, then what's the latter half of the book? There was a little bit of a moment like that partway through this book. And I don't want to say what it is, but if you've read A Study in Scarlet, you know. You know what I mean. So that kind of happens here. Um, I think my only other complaint was that the ending was a little bit disappointing for me, only because we get presented this like one possible solution to the issue they're having, uh, the kind of situation that they're in, and that solution gets kind of waved away. It's like, no, that doesn't make any sense. We have to work together to solve this problem. That ending, even if it's well-intentioned, is not going to be a good ending. And then the actual solution was just too similar to that for me to find it believable. They were okay with this being the solution. And I just don't think that that totally worked. I, I was a little bit frustrated at the end, but then the end actually did make me tear up. There's kind of like the end and there's an epilogue and I was tearing up in the epilogue and I really like that we get this little brief moment of seeing the characters now, you know, down the road away from the situation and where they're at in their lives now. I thought that that was really well done. I really enjoyed that. So again, kind of hit or miss, flat characters, minimal world building, really interesting themes, really good writing. And I think that the epilogue was just really charming and is like exactly what you need when you get to the end of this book because it's pretty dark. And I think that that just was like this nice little um, note of, of brightness to kind of, you know, mellow out the end of the book in a really satisfying way. And in itself, a little bit disappointing, but the epilogue was really good. So yeah, that's kind of my major thoughts on both of those. Um, let's go ahead and find out if we're right on this ghost. Uh, there were a couple of things I wanted to mention that I thought were really interesting as being like overlaps between these two because I wasn't expecting there to be really any at all. But both of these books have a kind of shadowy looming figure who lurks over the entire book while not actually being present for most of the book. We're right, it's a yokai, that's exciting. Um, and I, I thought that was really interesting. They both kind of lean on the side of this like idea of the looming figure, someone who is important but not present but still is like affecting everything that's happening. So I really enjoyed that element of it. And then there was also this central idea of like not leaving people behind that I thought was really interesting. That was a part of like the climax of both stories it was something about a character having to make a decision of like, do I go back and help or do I walk away? And that kind of being central to that final decision was really fascinating to me. I thought it was interesting they both had that. So overall, I really liked both of these. I gave Solar Nitrate four and a half stars. I gave Mr. Magic three and a half stars. And I really am excited for everyone to be able to read these when they come out later this year, actually just in a few weeks, both of them. Um, I think they're gonna be really interesting. I think they're conversation starters and I'm excited for more people to be picking up. So that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of ghost hunting, a little bit of um, not very adept ghost hunting happening there. We got it right, but I was just kind of wandering around in the dark for a while there. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway, and if you have, I hope you'll consider giving it a like, maybe even subscribing to see what comes next. I'm currently posting every Tuesday and Saturday, so there is more content coming soon, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.